The future of aircraft carriers is assured. Tomorrow's oceans will be more complex and contested, with new threats emerging. Yet the carrier will continue to provide unrivaled conventional superiority to the few navies which can operate them. Only the United States, China, and France are building the largest and most capable category of carriers, the supercarrier. In this video, we'll show you them and find out how they can change the warfare. Are you ready? Subscribe to our channel and let's start. Aircraft carriers are the pinnacle of capability of any Navy, and for good reason. They provide unrivaled conventional superiority over an adversary. The extreme range of aviation assets complicates countering them, such as by ground-based missiles, and their versatility extends from full-on warfighting through limited war to humanitarian and diplomacy missions. But only a few countries can build what we term supercarriers. A term coined to describe the U.S. Navy's Cold War giants, there is no clear definition what it means. Until now, the large aircraft carriers of other navies have always fallen short. The latest designs from China and France are worthy of the term. Other countries also operate carriers, notably Britain, India, Italy, Spain, and Russia. But these are smaller or less capable in some respect. There is no clear definition of a supercarrier, but these share key characteristics. They are the largest, can operate larger aircraft, such as airborne early warning planes, and their air wings rival most air forces. Gerald R. Ford Class Aircraft Carrier The gold standard for supercarriers is undoubtedly the United States. The current Nimitz-class supercarriers are being replaced by the equally large Gerald R. Ford class. These 100,000-ton behemoths are unrivaled in details, even if the others in this video will come close. Decades of hard-earned experience in supercarrier operations went into the design. Let's take a closer look at this aircraft carrier. Carriers of the Gerald R. Ford class have advanced arresting gear system, automation, allowing a crew of several hundred fewer than the Nimitz-class carrier, the updated RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, an ANSPY 3X-band multifunction radar and an ANSPY 4S-band volume search radar, designated together as dual-band radar, initially developed for the Zumwalt-class destroyers, an electromagnetic aircraft launch system in place of traditional steam catapults for launching aircraft, a new nuclear reactor design, the A1B reactor, for greater power generation, Stealth features to reduce radar cross-section. The ability to carry up to 90 aircraft, including the Boeing F-A-18E-F Super Hornet, Boeing EA-18G Growler, Grumman C-2 Greyhound, Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye, Lockheed Martin F-35 C Lightning II, Sikorsky AH-60 Seahawk helicopters, and unmanned combat aerial vehicles. The biggest visible difference from earlier supercarriers is the more aft location of the island superstructure. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers will have a reduced whole life cost due in part to reduced crew size. These ships are intended to sustain 160 sorties per day for 30 plus days, with a surge capability of 270 sorties per day. Let's dive into some features of this impressive aircraft carrier. An electromagnetic aircraft launch system, EMAILS, launches aircraft by means of a catapult employing a linear induction motor rather than the steam piston used on the Nimitz class. The E-Mails accelerates aircraft more smoothly, putting less stress on their airframes. It also weighs less, is expected to cost less and require less maintenance, and can launch both heavier and lighter aircraft than a steam piston-driven system, and reduces the carrier's requirement for fresh water, thus reducing the demand for energy-intensive desalination. Electromagnets are also being used in the new advanced arresting gear system. The current system relies on hydraulics to slow and stop a landing aircraft. While the hydraulic system is effective, as demonstrated by more than 50 years of implementation, the AAG system offers a number of improvements like the ability to capture unmanned aerial vehicles without damaging them. Another addition to the Gerald R. Ford class is an integrated active electronically scanned array search and tracking radar system. But let's move on to the next aircraft carriers. Fujian Class Aircraft Carrier Type 003 China's first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning exercising in the Yellow Sea, underlines China's growing experience and confidence in carrier operations. But the newest Type 003 Fujian Class, which is being fitted out in Shanghai, is the closest to the U.S. Navy's. It is slightly shorter, but otherwise similar in size. The Chinese design has conventional propulsion, however, 
compared to the nuclear propulsion of the U.S. Navy design. In principle, this gives the U.S. carrier an endurance advantage, although it needs to be remembered that the ship's surface escorts and aircraft all need replenishing either way, so the nuclear carrier still needs fleet auxiliaries to operate. Other aspects of the Chinese design are slightly less ambitious. It only has two aircraft lifts, versus three, and three emails, electromagnetic aircraft launch system catapults. This may reduce its air wing sortie rate. Port Avion Nouvelle Generation The French Navy, like the US, has much more experience of carrier operations. Their current carrier, the Charles de Gaulle, is nuclear-powered but noticeably smaller than the American supercarriers. The future Pang, Port Avion de Nouvelle Generation, will close the gap. At over 300 meters in length and 75,000 tons, it is only slightly smaller than the Chinese Type 003. Piaang will enable the French Navy to retain conventional superiority and more effectively project power independently or with allies. Studies on the Peng began in October 2018, and the design phase is estimated to cost approximately $1.09 billion. The French Navy's next-generation aircraft carrier will be able to carry up to 2,000 people. The vessel will feature an angled flight deck and up to three electromagnetic aircraft launch systems. The Pang vessel will be able to carry up to 30 new-generation maritime variants of the new-generation fighter aircraft and remote carrier vehicles being developed in the future combat air system program. The aircraft carrier will feature a catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery system, which will allow the onboard aircraft to launch from the deck of the aircraft carrier using electromagnetic catapults and land using arresting wires. The Pang will have the capability to hold enough ammunition for high-intensity operations of up to seven days. The vessel will be able to integrate new intelligence equipment and demonstrate superior power of command to perform increasingly diverse and complex operations. New Threats in Contested Waters The advent of a new generation of carrier-killer weapons is testament to the continued relevance of the aircraft carrier. China has been building up several anti-ship ballistic missiles and testing them on fake carriers in the desert. Russia too has been developing the Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile and maintains that the ginormous Poseidon nuclear-powered torpedo as an anti-carrier role. It also has the Kinzhal air-launched ballistic missile, which is claimed to be an anti-ship ballistic missile. And most recently, it was reported that Russia's Zmivik land-based ballistic missile will be employed as an anti-ship ballistic missiles. What this latest project says about Russian confidence in the other systems is unclear. What is clear, however, is that carriers still matter to strategic planners. That's all for today. What's the best supercarrier in your opinion? Write in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. See you soon.